we have arrived at another insufferable point during the NFL offseason. Oh, you thought I was done bitching about talking about football leading up to the draft? Now we're at the point where people are going to give grades to what happens over the weekend in the draft, even though no one's going to have any clue for two to three years. So I want to tell you something. Anyone trying to tell you that the Texans draft was good or bad is completely full of it at this moment in time. You cannot factually say it was a good or a bad draft. You can like what they did. You can dislike what they did. You can't say it was good or bad. You can't. There's no way to prove that it's a good or bad draft. But I hate this week because this is the week where all of a sudden pundits across NFL media are going to give grades for all of the drafts that took place. They shouldn't do that. There are only, I think, three things that you can theorize after an NFL draft is done. Number one, how a team views itself. I think you could argue that the Texans believe they're a lot better than they actually are after what they did this weekend in drafting C.J. Stroud, in drafting Will Anderson, bringing in some of the free agents that they brought in this offseason. They believe that they are better than you think they are, clearly. And I think that if you see them make a trade for Will Anderson after trading for a quarterback, clearly they are of the belief that in an AFC South, which isn't that good, they can compete. Is that true? I have no idea. I really don't. No one does. But they clearly have a lot of confidence in themselves. Then, after that, what was their strategy? Nick Casario likes trading. They had 12 picks going into the draft. Nick Casario made eight trades over the course of the weekend. They leave it with eight picks. And you know about C.J. Stroud. You know about Will Anderson, the other picks. Center from Penn State, Juice Scruggs in the second round. Nathaniel Dell, Tank Dell from Houston in the third. A small wide receiver, a pick number 69. Nice. Fourth round, Dylan Horton, a defensive lineman from TCU. Fifth round, Henry Chuo Otoo. I'm you kinda terrified every you single time it. I read that. A linebacker from Alabama. Sixth round, they drafted a center from Notre Dame. Uh, his name is just Jarrett Patterson. Sixth, Xavier Hutchinson, the leading receiver at Iowa State. Seventh round, Brandon Hill, a safety from Pittsburgh who's super athletic. So that's what they did. Their strategy was we are going to, first off, get defensive linemen. Second, get interior offensive linemen. Third, Try to fill playmakers at some point. Only one playmaker they brought in with Tank Dell, but conceptually you like the way that they use him. And, of course, we'll see what they're able to do with uh, the kid that they got in the sixth round, Xavier Hutchinson. A lot of people like the Hutchinson pick as far as a sixth round goes. And then the other thing that you can theorize, you can't grade what they did. You can't really determine whether or not it was a good or a bad draft. What can this team do with these players conceptually? I would say right now that Juice Scruggs, it is very likely that he is the starting center for Penn State this coming season. After that, okay, Tank Dell is probably going to be used on the outside and in sort of gadget plays, and maybe he ends up being your returner. That's a guy who did have a punt return touchdown last year. I think it was against South Florida. 17 total touchdowns on the season. And then after that, it really is entirely speculation. So I don't like this week and specifically this day because this is the day where everyone looks back at the draft and they give their full grades on what went down. So we're going to do something different here on the most interactive sports talk show in Houston because we're wacky. We are going to grade the grades that were given out for the Houston Texans in this draft over the past weekend. We're not going to grade what the Texans did. I have no idea. Could be good, could be bad. Lame, I know, but that's literally all you can say. I think the other thing that's perhaps debatable is, did they trade too much to go and get Will Anderson? And I know some people believe that they did. Honestly, I'm of the belief that they got their guys, and we'll see how their guys play. Because if the guys are good, you're not going to care about how much they traded to get Will Anderson or how much they perhaps left on the table by taking C.J. Stroud second overall and not trading out of that pick, which I think there are some people out there that did. So anyway, let's go through and grade the grades that were given out for the Houston Texans and what they did over the weekend. Ooh, yeah. little football time in Houston in the background. NFL.com gave the Houston Texans a B plus. 
Here's what's pathetic about NFL.com, though. They gave out 17 A's. 17 A's in the draft. 17. What kind of... Over half. This is... What is this? African-American studies at North Carolina for the basketball team? Everyone got an A? That is insane. Over half, as Sean said. The lowest grade. Can you guess what the lowest grade was? Uh, D minus. C plus. Oh. And it's NFL.com. State run media. C plus. I mean, think about how easy of a class that is. But here's what the Texans uh, write up says. Uh, The Texans made the correct move selecting Stroud as their next quarterback. Anderson could be an excellent edge. So basically they like it. I'm going to give NFL.com and their 17 A's though. I am giving them an F. Have some balls. You think Goodell's going to be mad if somebody gets a D? No. Make it the commanders. No one will care. Exactly. No one will care. C plus as the lowest grade. That's pathetic. Mel Kuyper of ESPN.com gave the Houston Texans a B. He pats himself on the back for thinking it was weird that people were discussing how they might not take a quarterback second overall. But he believes that they reached significantly on day two to take Juice Scruggs out of Penn State, the center, and to take Tank Dell. Even though he thinks it was a nice move, he thought that they traded too far up. So he gives them a B. He only gave out four A's. But the lowest grade that he gave for anybody, B minus. So everyone got Bs? Everyone got Bs. That <laughs> everyone got Bs. At that, least. That is the funniest way to protect yourself on all sides. It's such <laughs> coward BS. Have a bleeping take. You're, you invented this. You the, invented the pre-draft process. Have some balls, dude. The only thing that would be better if everyone got a C plus. It's just like everyone, oh, pretty good. Just won some, lost some. Uh, terrible. <laughs> you know who else disappointed me, too? So I'm giving that. I, did not complete. B minus for everybody. Pete Prisco of CBS Sports. I like Pete Prisco because Pete Prisco has opinions. Pete Prisco gave the Houston Texans a B. Throughout all of his grading, he gave out four A. But Pete Prisco's lowest grade was a C minus. And only three teams got it. Again, C is satisfactory. A C is 75 out of 100. It's, it's not ideal, but... C's get degrees, right? That's passable. It's satisfactory. What happened to people having balls and hot takes with the NFL draft? Pete, specifically. Fox Sports gave the Houston Texans a B plus. The write-up is very, like, nothing. It's by Ben Arthur for Fox Sports. I like Ben, but on paper, the Texans have one of the NFL's best draft classes at the top. And that's it. Doesn't doesn't go into any further detail other than that. So he, they gave him a B plus. I'm giving this one a D minus. A D minus. They didn't give him an. They did not give the Texans an A here. But the lowest grade for Fox Sports. Get this. One C minus. That's it. Where are my Fs? Come on. DraftKings gave the Houston Texans an A plus. They also gave out ten A's. The highest, excuse me, the lowest grade they gave, 1D+. Sporting News is the one that has the most stones here, but guess what? They also gave out 12 A's. The Texans were one of them, an A-, minus, 3 Ds. Okay, a little bit of harsh grading there. Walter Football, a website I like, gave the Texans an A-, minus, but they also gave out 11 A's. The only reason I'm going to give this a C The only grade that I like is because they gave the Dallas Cowboys a D. But that was the only D. So, can someone please explain to me? It's a big D. (laughs) Because it's Dallas. (laughs) Nice. That was was a good one, Sean. Got anything else? Dallas Cowboys. Keep going. I want want more comedy. (laughs) Eh. Wait (laughs) wait for later in the show. Okay, cool. (laughs) Look. Draft grading is dumb. But with all the people that grade draft picks, you would think that at least somebody would have the balls to give an F out. And I don't know if people are scared of getting freezing cold takes, like the bad takes about what the Seahawks did in 2012. Everyone gave them an F. Russell Wilson 
Bobby Wagner, what are they doing? I don't know if that's the main reason that nobody has any stones anymore, but draft grades are dumb, and no one has any teeth when they do them. And it annoys the hell out of me. If this is your craft, you study the NFL draft leading up to it. You do all these mock drafts, and then everybody gets an A, or everyone gets a B, and no one even gets a failure or a D. How am I supposed to take any of this seriously? The answer is you shouldn't, because again, you cannot grade a draft for two to three years. You can't. You can act like you can. Sorry, wrong. You can't do it until you actually see these guys on the field and whether or not they can play. Just because a team drafts leader of men or culture fits or whatever, it doesn't mean that things are going to change overnight. Anyway, end rant. This is the Paul Gallant Show, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, 713-780-3776 to call, to text. You can also join us on Twitter at Gallant Says, twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5. I guess CBS Sports gave a couple of Ds for the Texans, but I think in totality, the actual overall grade for the draft got somehow averaged up to like a C plus, B minus, B plus. It's strange. The funniest one is Mel Kiper only giving four A's, but then the lowest is B minus. So that means 28 teams got a B. Yep. <laughs> 28 teams. 28 teams. You're just scrolling through. And you're I, like, I, I was shocked. I was like, wait. This is a B. This is also a B. This is also a B.